In this video I'm going to show you how to use the real-time clock RAM, that's 8 kilobytes of spare RAM that's resident on the ESP32. Here's a simple example program that has a variable called wake up count, it's set to zero and it gets incremented and printed out and every time the program starts from sleep the value is 1. So every time the ESP32 goes to sleep it gets reset back to zero and they increment it. So how do we make the change? Well we simply add real-time clock data attribute in front of the variables we want to preserve in RAM. So I'll do that now. I'll just add in real-time clock data attribute and compile and upload that to the SP32. Wait for that to finish. And now, as expected, the first value is 1, 0, 1. But the next wake up is now 2. So the value there is now incrementing as each wake up event takes place. So there's the line that's incrementing and 3 and so on. So the value has been preserved while the ESP32 was in deep sleep mode. So making the change is very straightforward. Write your program to retain values of variables you want to preserve during sleep. Prefix them with real-time clock data attribute. Just one simple change. The real-time clock memory the 8 kilobytes of spare memory is also known as real-time clock slow. It is marginally slower. It's got a different clock source to the main RAM, but to all intents and purposes, it's running at full speed. And uh, just to note that the amount of memory you get in the ESP32 spare RAM has got more RAM than the, hot, than the Arduino Uno put together. So you can use integers, floating points, chars, you can define a structure, you can use arrays, you can use strings but they're treated as constants. In summary then, all you need to do is to write your program as normal but for variables you want to retain during deep sleep, prefix them with real-time clock data attributes and there's a couple of examples there. During deep sleep the content of those variables is retained. If you used ordinary RAM they wouldn't be. An 8K RAM will store approximately 800 integer values. Each integer takes 4 bytes. There's a small overhead, so it's 10 bytes per integer. See my GitHub for examples, including a simple BME280 data logger. I hope you found this technical note interesting and useful. 